Our text this morning is one of the many lovely baby stories that we have in the Bible. And anybody that's gotten to know me at all knows I'm all about babies. Pastor Steve laughs at me when I see a baby, I turn into mushy mommy mode. <laughs> But uh, this isn't that kind of a baby story. In fact, the text that we read this morning is a little like coming in in the middle of a series. Like when I started watching Game of Thrones with my son and I asked him a million questions about who was who and what was happening in the show. Let's call this serial Days of Their Lives. And the premiere episode was way back in chapter 12 of Genesis when we first met Abram. He was called and sent at 75 to go where he did not know. There was a promise that he would be a great nation and that he would be blessed to be a blessing. And in a cue dramatic music, high point of the episode, we see Abram packing everything up and heading out on this adventure with God. But then the episode ends on a bit of a downer. He's in Egypt and he's lying to Pharaoh about his wife Sarai and saying she's his sister. In the ensuing episodes, this issue gets settled. Pharaoh sends him away, and we see Abraham settling at the Oaks of Mamre. It becomes Abram's place, Abram and God's place. He builds an altar to God there, and we see that Abram is indeed being blessed. He's beginning to have success with the other nations around him. This promise is starting to be fulfilled. But in chapter 15, Abraham kind of confronts God with the pink elephant in the room. There's still no baby. He's childless. And God reinforces that promise. I said what I said. And then he directs Abraham to look up at the sky and count those stars if he can. His descendants will be as many as the stars of the sky. We fast forward to the episode where Abram is now 86. Chapter 16, there's still no son, and there's a new character introduced. Hagar, Sarah's servant woman. Abraham and Sarah have decided on a culturally acceptable workaround. It's ancient surrogacy, if you will. And there is a baby. Ishmael is born. And so at the end of this episode, we see Abram with a child, finally getting some fulfillment. But we also see Sarai, perhaps off to the side, a little left out of this picture. This plan, it's not working out like she thought it might. And she's not feeling like this feels like fulfillment. In the latest episode, we have Abe at 99 now. This episode is just Abraham and God, no sign of Sarai around. Chapter 17, God reiterates this promise to Abraham, but finally there's some new information. God gives them new names. This is where they become Abraham and Sarah. God gives Abram the sign of circumcision to show his continued obedience to the promises and the commitment to God. And for the first time, God specifies a year from now, Sarah, who's 90, by the way, will give birth to a son. Abraham laughed. I'm not talking LOL laughed. This is ROFL. Abraham laughed so hard, he fell on his face. Really, God? A son? No, really. And we don't really need another baby. There's Ishmael. Let's just let the promise be right there. We're good. But that's not the way this story ends. That's what takes us to today's text in chapter 18, featuring Sarah. 
era is so relatable, I think, even centuries later. Sarah was, of course, a mere woman in a society where women were a commodity, where value for a woman was centered in fertility, and she was not just a woman, but an infertile woman. Infertile is a word that still carries countless pain. But Sarah was not just childless. She was past the age of the possibility of children. She was old. Talk about a painful word. She was an old menopausal woman. Whatever way you slice it, she was the least in society's view. Sarah had to feel a little less than, a little not good enough, like she had nothing much to offer. In the beginning of our text, Sarah is called on to serve, as she had served for 24 years. But still, she's kept out of sight, waiting. And then she heard it. She heard the news that Abram already had heard, that in a year, she will give birth to a child. And Sarah also laughed. A baby with that old man? He doesn't see me that way. I've no rhythm of fertility left. This dead relationship will now birth promise? But God saw Sarah, really saw her. God heard her, and God spoke truth into her life. I know, Sarah, I know. You laughed, and it is funny. And still, Sarah, I promise. The promise is for you, too. The year went on, Abram and Sarah continued on, as Martin Luther would say, both saint and sinner. Again in that year, Abram referred to Sarah as his sister out of fear. But in chapter 21, at the end of our text, they received Isaac, the child of laughter. Isaac's name, you see, means laughter. And most notably, we hear Sarah say that her laughter, her joy, will be shared with everyone around her. The woman from the fringe of the community is now sharing this central cosmic God joke, this baby, this laughter, with all. I wonder a little where we feel like we might be unseen, unheard, forgotten, left out, just not valued. I wonder what it is that I find laughable. What have I forgotten how to even hope for? What God promises do we see as impossible for us in our real lives? What dreams do I not dare even dream? Where have I decided just to let well enough alone? Not feel too deeply or examine too closely? And I wonder what it is we can learn from God in this story. Where's the good news for me today? I think it's good news to hear that our human failures, our faithlessness, won't prevent God's faithful fulfillment of God's promises and purposes. We don't change God, but God changes us and our doubt or our resignation into real joy. God is a promise keeper. We can trust God. It may not be anything like we think or hope, but God may 
surprise us. And God does choose to work in and through us, in our lives, our hopes, our dreams, and even in our failures. God uses us no matter how unlikely we see ourselves. Because God's promises are even for the unseen, the unheard, the undervalued. Nothing is too wonderful, too extraordinary, impossible for God. And we get to share in each other's joy, in each other's laughter. Thanks be to God.